It's time for another edition of Prose with Vicki Locke and Cindy Woolley from C2 Communications. It's happy hour and time for Prose, where we talk about books that we love with fabulous authors while sipping our favorite beverage. I'm Vicki Locke, and today I'm drinking a, a Vouve Rose in my Yeti cup that's great. This is a wine cup that's great for the beach. So what are you drinking? I am drinking 14 Hands, which is a Cabernet, and uh, it's not in a, a glass that's suitable for the beach. Oops, we'll hold that in front of the camera. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, I'm not a wine connoisseur, but I just, I just love 14 Hands. It's such a, such a mellow flavor. I just love it. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're happy with that. Yes. And uh, Cindy and I were talking recently about books versus movies. Now she tends to like nonfiction. I like fiction. I'm bringing her over to the dark side. But did you know that um, Reese Witherspoon is on set right now for a book that I loved last year. It was my favorite beach read last year in 2020. It was uh, Where the Crawdads Sing. So I hope she does it justice. I love her to death, so I'm sure she will. Mm -hmm. And I found out that Ryan Gosling is going to be starring in a book I just finished called Project Hail Mary. It's sci-fi. I don't know if you're into that. Mm. And I think that's really going to be tough to bring to the big screen. Mm. Yeah, no, I haven't, I hadn't um, heard of the sci-fi. I'm not really into that, but I love Reese Witherspoon. And um, didn't she play the main character in Wild? Yeah, um, she did. Oh my gosh. I love that book so much. The book and the movie coincided so greatly. Um, and we got to meet the author. I, I took my daughter to an author chat, uh, her first, well, her second author chat um, to see uh, the, the speaker uh, talk about Wild. But wow, the movie was definitely intense. So I'm sure Reese Witherspoon will do that movie justice. I love Fried Green Tomatoes too, one of those classics. That was different from the book, but I did love that movie too. You know, um, I can just remember Kathy Bates, and she was always fighting with these younger women. Do you remember when she was pulling through that supermarket parking lot and the lady Classic said, line. Oh, I got better insurance. You may be younger, but I got better insurance, right? That was great. She was also great in Misery. And that, I think that's the first time I ever saw her. And that was a Stephen King novel. And she just made that movie, I thought. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, and Harry Potter, I think when I read the Harry Potter books, I thought, no way. When I heard that it was going to be made into a movie, how are they going to do this? And I don't remember if Steven Spielberg put his spin on it, but it, it was just as good as the books, if not better. I, I'll confess I did not go through the books, the, the Harry Potter books, but I did watch the movies and I did love them. I was quite addicted to them for a little while. So that was very hooky. Um, the one I can't fall in love with though is Twilight. The, the movie or the books? Neither. <laughs> Neither. 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 <laughs> I oh. actually like them both. Do you think less of me now? <laughs> <laughs> and I was team Edward all the way. <laughs> team I, Edward. I, yes. So you don't get it, but yeah. One book I bet, um, did you see the movie, The Help? I did. It was fantastic. Okay. Did you read the book? Mm-hmm. You did? Yes. See, I thought the book was so much better. I was disappointed in the movie, but most people I talked to that didn't read the book thought it was just a fabulous movie, but I just thought there was so so much missing from the book that it was almost a different dynamic. But mm -hmm. if you didn't read it and see it and you can't compare, then I don't know what to tell you. But I, I did think I was a little disappointed in that movie because I love the book so, so much. Mm hmm. Well, and our guest today has had some um books turned into movies. Um, Emily uh, Giffen hasn't joined us just yet. I think she's having some technology issues, but- Oh no, 
Yes, Something Borrowed was uh, 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 came to the big screen in 2011, I think. And it's one of those things that the book, the movie was different because the character played by John Krasinski, he was kind of a minor character in the book, but who doesn't love him? And he was more of a, a bigger part in the movie, which I thought added something to it. And that, that made me happy because he's so cute. So is she here? Guess who's joining us? All the right, technically. Technical Emily. challenges averted. So thank you so much, Emily. Hey. hey. Good to see you. It's working, I think. I'm so sorry. I am stuck back at about 2009 with my technology skills. It's <laughs> terrible. It's like, it, this happens every time. So I, am, I apologize, but it's so good to see you. Good okay. to see you too. What are you drinking? Because you should be drinking I if am. you've had technology problems, especially with a computer. A little Prosecco here. Mm. Nice and light and summery. Nice. Love excuse to pour a glass of that at 4.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. Great. And we were talking about movies versus books, and we brought up something borrowed. I've always wanted to ask you, what when that happens, when you get the phone call, or how does that happen, that somebody wants to, they've, they've optioned your, your book to become a movie, do you lose all control? Are you on the set? Do you have anything to do with casting? Can you tell us sure. what goes on? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. So, you know, there are so many, you know, there's so many times when you, you have, you sign an option, you, you think it's going to be made and it's not. So that sort of happened a few times along the way. And so one of the options lapsed. Um, I can't remember who it was with, but it lapsed. And I got this phone call that, there were some producers that were doing the blind side, which of course, you know, that they were making the movie. So I, I, no one had heard of it yet. Um, they were making this movie called the blind side in Atlanta. And did I want to meet with the producers because they were interested in, um, you know, making, uh, making the movie. So I said, sure. And, you know, I've been told so many times by my reps, like, don't, you know, don't get your hopes up first of all. And also you won't be involved. Um, because it's just, you know, they don't want to involve the authors. Like, why would they? Um, and so I went to dinner and completely hit it off with uh, the woman's name is Molly Smith. Um, and she is still one of my very dearest friends. And um, she's actually uh, producing The Lies That Bind. We're working on that right now and still something blue. But so we hit it off so much. And I think she was also told, don't get too chummy with the authors because they're difficult and they're neurotic and they're, you know, uh, they don't want their books changed at all. But for, with me, I, I've always felt that the book is the book and, um, you know, nothing can change that, the, you know, the story that I wrote. And um, to me, it's like very different bringing it to the, to the big screen. And although, and I was involved because she was, we got along so well, um, you know, and I was aware, I think at every turn, if you're difficult or if you're, you know, they can cut you out. So, um, you know, I, I, we just all got along and it was a blast. And I, there was a few things that I said, oh, you know, maybe they, the characters wouldn't do that. Or, you know, John Krasinski sort of professed his love to Rachel. I didn't like that, but as it turns out, I did like it. It works with the film, but ultimately, you know, it was, it was, it was fun to have it be a collaborative effort to have the world inside your head then turn into sort of a collaborative effort with a team of people. And I thought they did an amazing job. And I thought it was very true to the tone of, of the story and the characters. So it was it was thrilling for me. It was so much fun. I cannot believe it's been 10 years though. That blows my yeah. mind how fast this 10 years have gone by. So I have to apologize too for this dark, depressing background. It's my husband's office. I was in this white light, right? <laughs> background with you know when we started to have our technical difficulties and now it's like you know buzzkill back here <laughs> so, don't let it kill your buzz no it won't nothing can. Not with you ladies. so yeah it was a lot of fun it was definitely fun i haven't seen that in years too i need to go back and watch it with my kids because they were too young to to see it when it first came out now they're teenagers so um, so there wasn't anything cringeworthy. You weren't nervous that here's your baby. Here's this book, your best-selling author that comes out, puts you on the map, I think. 
And um, so you weren't even worried a little bit. Well, I guess if you were on set, were you on set a lot of the times when they were filming? A lot, a lot, because I had three little children and they were filming in New York and I live in Atlanta, um, you know, where I am now. And uh, so I wouldn't say a lot. Um, but again, I think when you trust the people and you like the people that you're working with and you, you know, they're the experts in their field. They know, you know, they, they know what they're doing. It's, it's sort of like, you know, you have to sort of let go of that. You know, you can't be too precious about the book, which will always be, you know, the book. And um, okay. I really did trust them. And I think they, I, th I think they, I, I think they nailed it. I, I mean, I, I loved what they did with it. Did you, did you like the movie? I did. I did like the movie, but I noticed there, but some, not always with some books, yeah. I get upset, but yours, I thought they did a great yeah. job. I did too. I did too. You know, we got panned too. We got some bad reviews on that movie, which is, you know, I remember thinking they they missed what we're doing here. Um, but over time, I think they said, Molly told me recently that um, something part of all the films that she's done, I, I think, except for The Blind Side, it's the second most, you know, watched in her entire library of films. And she's done some, um, you know, really, really big things. So sometimes the critics get it wrong. I think they got it wrong on this one. So I think it's a great film. But um, what have you guys been watching lately? What, what have you seen lately, movies or shows? I was just talking about when you were having your technical difficulties that um, Ryan Gosling is going to star in the Project Hail Mary. I don't know if you've read that. I haven't. That's which is I kind of sci-fi and science, and it's how a, a would-be or an, an accidental astronaut tries to save Earth. And I absolutely loved it. I just got my husband to read that right now. So <laughs> that I'm excited about. And we were talking about Reese Witherspoon with um, where the crawdads sing. She's filming that she right is. now. I know that's going to be so exciting. She does such great work. She's been so wonderful for uh, women's writers and voices. And it's she has exciting to see what, what she has built. Um, it's incredible. So yeah, it's, it's exciting for sure. I've been watching, I've been, like shamelessly binge watching uh, Manifest. Have you seen that? Oh, I have just started that series. And okay. my daughter and I have is just- Is that the one, is that the TV show where they come back and they were gone for seven years? Well, the, yeah, they were gone for five and a half years. Five and a half, okay. Um, get it straight, but- um, <laughs> Sorry. Then it, was just a, it, it was just a three hour flight. You know, they just, they had some turbulence. And it was a lot of turbulence. And so, you know, but then the, everything got right and they landed fine and then they get off the plane and it's been five and a half years for, um, for the whole world, which was it's crazy. But um, I have twins and it, the, the fact that one of the twins was on the flight and one wasn't and they aged like, you know, one's now five years older, that just kind of blew my mind. But yeah, 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 it's funny. So, sorry, I was talking to my daughter there. <laughs> so, not the twin. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's this, this summer though, I feel like we're, you know, we're finally, you know, coming out of the, the dark days. I feel guilty for even being holed up watching, you know, TV at all, or you feel like you just should be out socializing, you know, at least with people who are vaccinated and so forth. Have you well, I think books, especially your book that just came out in paperback, The Lies That Bind, books like that, since we couldn't travel and you're reading that, then you can go to New York or you can go... You, you, uh, when we couldn't travel, right. books was a great escape for me during the yeah. pandemic. You I think it was a lifesaver. Transport yourself to a to a different world for sure, you know. And and I felt that way about you know writing too. Uh, just you know, just to be able to like you can't go anywhere or do anything. So to just get you know and sit down with your characters and spend some time and you know, write a scene, it just sort of like takes your mind off things. So. Um, yeah, I think reading and writing just that both were so in, important in, in, in the past year. So, um, but yeah, I'm excited that the, the book is out in paperback. You know, a lot of people only read books in paperback. Are you, are you that way? Do you prefer, a, you know, audible versus paperback versus hardcover? I'm audible and Vicky's okay. hardcover. Um, but yeah, I, I binge on, on Audible and I'm about halfway through the Lies of Bind. Oh, okay. Um, well, no spoilers. Come no on. spoilers. <laughs> yeah. But I, w I will laugh. I was telling Vicky the other day, I said, oh my gosh, in, in this first chapter, she starts talking about AOL and I hear this 
ding, 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 you know, like that, that dial up sound. And it totally transported me back. Um, and then as the, the character is going through this, this experience in, in New York, I was like, that is so New York, right? Where you can just go to a bar somewhere and, and meet these just fascinating people. So I know, um, I know I miss it. You know, it's always hard to say I lived in New York until, um, actually my, my flight out of New York, I moved, I was an attorney in New York city. And then I like, you know, left my job and planned to move to London. Um, and that sort of all happened in the summer of 2001. So my flight was September 16th, 2001, which of course is five days after nine 11. Wow. And did, you know, my going away party was on the ninth. I think my last day of work was like September 7th or something like this. And so obviously no one knew what was, what was hap what was coming. Um, but it was such a weird time. You know, my flight was actually the first, I don't know if it was the very first flight, but that evening, that the night of the 16th, 15th or 16th, I think it was the 16th was the first, you know, night they allowed, uh, flights out. So here I am leaving New York and, um, you know, you could still see the smoke and, you know, what a, just like, you know, tragic, terrible time. But a lot of this book is written, you know, sort of prior to 9-11, which now we know is the last, I think of it as the last, um, you know, well, I should clarify, I wrote it last year or whatever, but it takes place in that summer before mm -hmm. 2001. But I always think of that as sort of the last, you know, this like golden time in New York City, like the last, you know, like, innocence you know it's just you know when sex in the city was like just all the rage and right and, you know living there i was a you know lawyer and we go to all the same places in the bars and so it was really um it was a lot of fun revisiting the that sort of golden time in new york city and and yeah remembering all that like being uh there was a um it, it just the, the AOL conversations, you know, you're, you're, you're supposed to be billing and instead you're just ding, 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 ding. Cause you don't want the law firm to see that. They don't, you don't want them to see that you're on the you know personal call. And of course they keep you there. They trap you there forever. I don't know if you have good friends who were uh, ever in a um, Manhattan law firm, but it's like, you, you've got to stay there until midnight, whether you're working on anything or not. So the AOL was like the real savior of that little time. But, um, and then the scene that it did the, the start of the book that lies the bind is um, this is a slight spoiler but not really um the characters from something borrowed show up um at the towards about two-thirds of the way so you probably haven't gotten there yet into the lies the bind so if you don't remember something borrowed or you never read something borrowed it's just it's it's in, it's insignificant it's like a throwaway dinner scene but for those who know those characters they're like oh my gosh you, you see this cameo so it's they're back. a prequel to um to something borrowed, it happens like a, a year, you know, or a year or two before something borrowed takes place. So, um, and that, and then the first scene in the, in the lies that bind takes place at that bar seven B, which is first on, um, you know, Avenue B and seventh. And mm -hmm. that's where the first scene and something borrowed takes place. So it's like this whole, you know, it's a small world kind of thing. Oh, I see some people commenting here. I just noticed this. Oh. Um, oh, Janice Summerlin's on, and she went to high school with my mom. Hi, Janice. Oh, my gosh. 1963, Hagerstown. Um, I was going to ask you if the whole experience, the 9-11 experience, is what drove you to become a writer and leave law. Well, no, because I quit. Okay, well, two things. First of all, I have wanted to be a writer since I was probably you know, in the first grade, I remember saying that I wanted to be, you know, write books. And my mother said, who's a retired librarian now and sort of in, instilled in me the love of, uh, of reading and, and, and books and, and writing. Um, but I said, I want to write books when I grow up. And she said, you know, that's called an author. And I'm like, whoa, that's <laughs> like a cool word. Like, I want to be an author. So I've always wanted to do that. And I think, you know, the, going to law school is one of those, um, one of those default things that so many people do. It's like, okay, well, I have, you know, I'm reasonably smart. I'm a good writer. I'm not good at math and science. I'm not going to med school. You know, you seldom meet a doctor who's like, yeah, I went to med school and I practiced medicine for a little while, but now I'm doing something else because they knew they wanted to be a doctor. Whereas lawyers are like, I don't know what else to do. I'll take the <laughs> I'm, 
you know, I'm not really, I have no idea. I'm not really that good at anything. So I'll just go to law school. So there's a whole, all of my friends from law school practically, I mean, I would say 90% of us are no longer practicing. Um, and so when I was, was an attorney for those five years at this New York firm, um, and then MetLife building this firm called Winston Strawn. So I still have a lot of friends from, from that place. And I'm, I'm fond of it in that sense, even though I hated being a lawyer. Um, but I was writing, and this is, I should not admit to this at all. I'm trying to see if I have, yeah, in that corner over here, I have, oh no, here it is. Look, this is my <laughs> husband's office, but it kind of like, I don't want to look at it all the time, but this is my 2000 diary where I had all my billable hours in it. You can see oh, I was wow. billing a lot because I was <laughs> writing my novel at the law firm. I know. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I was sitting there like writing chapters of it. So it was another book called Lily Holding True, which was sort of a sweet coming of age story uh, about a girl who moves from New York to um, Alabama and she's in an interracial relationship. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's a, it's a very sweet story, but not a whole lot happens. So consequently it was never, it was never published. Um, and so really that's what it was. It was more the, rejections that rolled in for that novel, the fact that it had taken me five years to write it. Um, and, you know, it's like, if I write another book, it's going to take me another five years to write while I'm supposed to be, you know, billing. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, at that point said, I'm going to quit. I'm going to take a year. I'm going to try to write a book in one year's time. And, um, my, my father freaked out. He's like, you know, you might not be able to get your job back and you could be in a recession and, you know, this is crazy and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I always throw him under the bus with that little detail. <laughs> Meanwhile, my mother was like, you can do it. I believe in you. Um, sorry, dad, but it's the truth. Uh, you always have to have a practical parent, right? So, um, but I moved to, I moved to London and I gave myself a year. It took me a little over a year and then I wrote something borrowed. So I think it's easy. People sometimes look at that timeline of like leaving for law and writing something borrowed. And they say, wow, like you, you know, you did this, you accomplished this and you know, one year and your first try, it's amazing, but they don't know about the, uh, the five years and all of the rejections that came in. So my first agent, I always tell aspiring writers, and I'm sure there's plenty of, of um, your listeners, viewers here, um, either are writers themselves or know someone who's trying to, to get published. And um, I always tell the story about how my first agent, um, who I'm not no longer with, um, sent me this. I kept saying, you know, I, I'm aware that the news probably isn't good, but I was wondering if you could update me on the status of my manuscript and the submissions. And if we heard back from everyone, da, 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 da. she just kind of never gave back to me. And then finally she sent me this uh, email and it just said, they all rejected it. <laughs> and that was all she said. She said, they all rejected it. It didn't even have a period. I'm like, there's not even a punctuation mark on this email. Like, it's so <laughs> insulting and demeaning and awful and depressing. Um, and then, of course, you know, 9-11 happened, which puts like everything in perspective, the problems that we thought we had. And, um, you know, it was, it was a sort of, I moved to London. I landed there. I had no friends. And it was. Um, it was sort of an ideal situation to, to, to write, um, you know, it rained all the time. My friends on the East coast didn't wake up until you know, one or two o'clock. So you, <laughs> you have, you, you can't procrastinate. You know, I walked around Kensington, I'm a uh, big, you know, Royal follower, like love the Royals. So I would walk around the Kensington gardens area, kind of look at the palace and but except for that, you know, you, I had to just work. Plus I had to, you know, I had told my father it's one year and don't freak out. So. Um, so yeah, it worked, it, it worked out, but the backstory of the rejection that came along with that is, um, you know, there's, it, there's, it's, it's just not what it would seem to be. If you just read my, you know, bio somewhere, it's like, wow, she went from being a lawyer to being a writer, <laughs> just like that. No, it didn't, it did not happen that way, but that was another time. I think, you know, this, this idea of before and after, you know, with, with COVID, like, with 9-11, you know, every, a lot of people were comparing it to, to that, um, you know, this like, this something that's happening, you know, of course, 9-11 was more, you know, our country, but it, the whole world was talking about it and it affected the whole world in the aftermath, but certainly everyone in our country, you know, was talking about those things. And 
and, and I think there's something about those moments in time. Like we'll always remember, you know, the summer of 2020 with um, George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and like, you know, everything with the COVID and there's, there's something about those moments that I think bring us closer together because we're sharing, you know, we're sharing something so intense, even though our lives, you know, everyone's going through separate things in their personal lives, but that's sort of bringing us together. And, um, and I think those moments in time, this, this sense of like before and after, because I could have set the lies that bind, there was no reason that I needed to set it around, you know, that 9-11 had to happen sort of at the midway point of the book, it could have been anything. Um, but I, I like the idea of, of exploring how we as people, like as individuals change as we reflect in this big, you know, events that happen like in, in the collective consciousness and like how that changes us. And, um, and I think we saw that, you know, with 9-11, like people sort of like, oh, you know, your priority shift and what do you want to do with your life? And life is short. And, you know, you, you just, it's, you really think about your relationships, I think a lot. And in this, that happened with Cecily and the lies that bind. And I think she re-examined her relationship and her career and everything else. Um, and I think, you know, that happened a lot with us as a, as a country, you know, individually last year. Um, I, I can't tell you the number of, I mean, this is very sad in a sense, the number of friends I have who, you know, decided to get a divorce last year. Um, and, you know, well, it is sad in a sense, but if, if you view that as sort of, the, you know, evolution and progression of who you are and they just sort of came to terms with it during that time. And, you know, maybe it would have taken another five years. So they kind of have five years of their life that they wouldn't have, that they would have wasted coming to the same result. Um, there is something about these moments that I think cause us to be really reflective and realize what's important and make decisions about our jobs. You know, maybe we don't want to be going into the office and commuting an hour a day. Like maybe we want to leave our job. We don't, we don't find it fulfilling. We want to do something else. We want to spend more time with our children. Um, you know, you could go on and on and on, but I think we saw that. And that's very much sort of a theme of, of the lies that bind in terms of this big thing happens. And it's, you know, there's one chapter with 9-11, so it's not, you know, this big, um, you know, depressing part of the book, but it's just more like this thing happened and then she, you know, internally goes through all of this. You know, you, you think about relationships differently when something big happens. So um, did you like, I know you're not finished with the book, but did you, what did you think of Grant versus Matthew? I, I, I finished it. Cindy, we don't want to spoil anything for her. I know there's some people didn't like the ending. I like the ending and I'm going to stick to it. Okay, good. Good. good, 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 good. <laughs> um, I, 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 you know, well, I, I say this and you probably are thinking, well, that's a given. You like the ending, you wrote it, but sometimes, Sometimes I'm not thrilled with the character's decisions. You know, I, I wrote this book called Love But that's Story. real. That makes it real. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like you can't, you know, in the beginning when you sit down to write a book, you, 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 you know what you want to happen and you think that you have it figured out. But then as you get to know the characters, you know, you change your mind. Um, the best example, because it's the book that most people know because the film is something borrowed. When I originally sat down to write that, you know, what was going on in my life, turning 30 and sort of, you know, I was coming out of one relationship and I very much kind of wanted Rachel to, you know, have this affair and then realize that he was wrong and he was a jerk because who else would do this with their, you know, the, the, the best, their, their bride to be's maid of honor. So he's got to be a jerk. Right. And I wanted her to be at the end, like strong and independent and walk off into the sunset and leave these two losers behind. And then as you're writing, as, I, as, as I'm writing the story and putting these characters on the page together and seeing them together, I'm like, he actually does love her and he's just messed up and he's with the wrong person. And sometimes good people do terrible things. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's like that. It's like, well, this, you know, we gotta be true to the character that you created. I create the character, but then once they become real in your mind, you gotta have to go with what they want. But someone here said, I love the ending. I don't have my like readers on, so it looks like yes, Kayla Rains. I love the ending. Thank you very much, and I love that there's a greetings from Brighton, UK here. 
Um, I love England so, so much. I feel guilty saying it, but I love it even more than our country. Is that terrible to say? I love them both equally. I love them both equally. I shouldn't say that. But my mother always says, she did this to me. She's such an Anglophile. So this is her fault, like her obsession with England. But she always says to me, if I had been there during the Revolutionary War, I would have not been on the side of the, you know, of, of, of the, the American troops. I'm like, would you, would you have been like a Benedict Arnold? Like, would you have? <laughs> I would have. I would have. Like, okay, well, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> Anyway, hi to, to uh, Brighton, UK. Um, well, um, Jennifer Jennifer Bridges is asking the the question. I'm sure it's on, on everyone's mind. What's uh, what's the next step? She loves she loves the book. And what's what's the next book? Well, I'll tell you first. I'll let you know that that again. I, I think I mentioned the same producer who did something borrowed is working on developing that lies the bind as a um, limited series. Um, so, so hopefully something that you all will be binge watching in the, in the months ahead, as soon as we, um, you know, get going on that, we do have our actress and it's driving me absolutely crazy that we have our Cecily and she's so perfect and she's such a great actress. And, and you can't say who it is. And I'm so annoyed because they can't. Has she won an Academy Award? You have to wait. I don't like one of these days. Has I'm she been gonna... nominated for an Academy Award? What's that? Has she been nominated for an Academy Award? She has not. No, she's not to my knowledge, but she's, um, she's, I, I'm going to get in trouble. I always get in trouble with people. You know, I'm a, I, I don't filter. I don't filter anything that I'm thinking. So I have to be good, even with that respect on my head. Did they ask you about her? Is that how you know? Did they say, hey, what do you think? About this actress? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. We went, you know, we, we discussed it. You know, these two girls, it's, it's Molly and her sister, I should say women. I'm, I'm almost 50 years old and I'm still saying girls, it's terrible. Um, but uh, her, uh, she and her sister are such good friends. And so we, you know, they're constantly like, I mean, they, they texted me just a half hour ago about something. Um, oh, this is, is there are four seasons in Buckhead or is that in Midtown or am I wrong? Not important, not work related. But um, yeah, we're so, we're so close that it's like, what do you think about her? What do you think about her? And, you know, if I said that I didn't, like someone or they weren't right for it, they absolutely would move on to the next person. It, at, at one point, I think there was three that we were considering and, um, you know, there were, I love them all. I and mean, that's the other thing because, because I don't picture an actress in my mind when I write the book and because I'm so, you know, my view has always been the book is the book and whatever happens next happens next. I'm, you know, I'm really open to a lot of casting ideas that I think you know, some other, some other authors might be like, well, no, 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 that's totally right. I mean, Darcy in Something Borrowed is supposed to have dark hair and green eyes. And of course, Kate Hudson's Kate Hudson. But I'm like, that doesn't matter. Right. She channels, she channels it right. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not caught up in that. But the next book um, is one that um, I haven't talked about that yet either. And if I talk about it now, it's gonna, you know, I have to, I have to perfect how I how I introduce it to the world. So I sound like I'm full of secrets and I swear I'm not, but um, this book is a familiar, the retelling of a familiar old story, um, a, a story that of, 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 um, of a couple, a, a, a tragic ending to a very glamorous couple and it's sort of a retelling of that. So you can maybe Yes. We can't get anything out of her, Cindy. We should have plied her with alcohol. We should have sent her oh, a candy. I'm doing that. Cheers. And you then she these. would have spilled the beans. You guys, give me a secret. Give me something. Come on, you yeah. have to have something. I I got nothing. You, Cindy, you have anything? You media, you media types always have something. I I really don't. I can't think of anything. I, I told you Ryan Gosling. Had you heard that before? I had not. See, you already See? All right, there you go. I gave you that. Yeah. What do you guys think about Ben? What do we think about Benifer? I think it's great revenge. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> also, don't you feel like it makes, it's like going back in time. Like there's something about yeah. it that makes me feel like 10, ten years younger. Like, <laughs> it's, it, you know, I have to keep telling myself it's just because they're back together. doesn't mean it's 2004, you know, and I'm, you know, in my, late thirties, early forties or whatever. But, um, 
I love the idea of like a second chance, of, you know, a second chance at something and redemption. And, you know, what are their conversations like? Are they like, how could you have done that? How could you have made me look that like how much of their time in the first two weeks of their relationship was backward looking, like revisiting? See, I think they got together. They met by chance. And he said, is it true that A-Rod cheated on you? And maybe she said it was. And he said, well, why don't we get the paparazzis right around the corner? Let's start something. And it was sweet revenge. And is the relationship real? I don't know. Oh. I want them both to be happy. Do you know There's a book that there. That thought I, I'm never feeling a book coming on. <laughs> I don't like that. I want it to be real. Okay. Erase. Okay, what do you think that Jennifer Garner thinks about it? Do you think she's just happy for him or think she's worried or do you think she's just totally indifferent? After the picture I saw of her throwing the McDonald's in the back seat after he had another relapse or whatever, I think she's over him. I think obviously they'll always have a connection because of the kids, but sure. I think she's moved on. And oh, she I don't think for a single second she's like jealous or anything, but do you think she thinks good for him or do you think she thinks this is just like a hot mess i think she thinks what another hot mess uh, hot mess yeah <laughs> you do. What, what is it some tigers don't change their stripes you know no. so. i like to believe that tigers can always change their stripes but maybe you're right we'll see i guess we'll see we'll see <laughs> but i like happy endings too and this is going to be a happy ending because unfortunately we've got to go. But uh, one of your friends is going to be on Prose next week. One of your favorite new beach reads. Who's that? Colleen. Oh, yay. Yes. We had our book club last night. You guys eat at EG Book Club. You can go and look at the, look at the chat. But I'm sure yours is going to be more interesting uh, when you have her on. But um, she is she's amazing. You're going to love it. You're going to love her. Have you read the book? Obviously you have. Wait, when is, when is that? I don't want to miss it. It's going to be next Tuesday. Colleen Oakley. She's got the book, The Invisible Husband of Frick Island. I know Mary Kay Andrews loves the book. I know you love the book. And it, everybody's always looking for a great beach read. And this is just another to add to the list. Well, that's fabulous. And Mary Kay's uh, book is great too. The one that just came out. Yeah, the newcomer. We like yeah. that too. The newcomer was fantastic. Yeah, it was really good. I think. That well, was Emily, really good. again, how can people find out? Can they get the book, the paperback, anywhere? Amazon, anywhere? Yep. Buys it by, and you can find it anywhere online. And um, I hope you love it. And uh, yeah, uh, check check out my book club on uh, at EG Book Club on Instagram too. So I'd love to see you there as well. But you guys, this was such a treat. And I'm sorry about the technical difficulties, but. But how fun. And I'm going to yes. get my wine. What fun. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, ladies. Thanks. Thanks. Join us next week for another edition of Prose with Vicki Locke and Cindy Woolley from C2 Communications.